السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بهدي إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Brothers and sisters you are officially watching Mufti Q&A The question it says السلام عليكم I saw your video on the Jalsa of resting the Prophet Sallallahu prayer and brief. However, you didn't mention the jalsa of rest in that video of prayer, or of the prayer. I want to know how to implement it. My question is, should the one praying in the second sajda, first or third raka, say the takbir and then sit for a moment's rest, and then get up or sit up after the sajda and then say the takbir and stand? And if the correct answer is the former, then how does the Imam implement this if the people behind him might will stand up or think he made a mistake? Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. As far as the jalsa of resting, which is known as jalsa tul istiraha, a brief and quick pause after the second sajda and before a person gets up to make the next rak'ah, to go to the next position of Qiyam. This sitting is obviously well known to the questioner, but may be unknown to many other listeners and watchers, or listeners and viewers. So the justice of Istiraha, before we get into how to implement it, and after we've spoken on exactly what it is, we say the people of knowledge have two main views regarding its legality. Is it something from the Sunnah? Should the one who's offering the prayer make that jalsa of resting? Or should they get directly up and rely and depend upon their knees? Or depend upon the strength of their legs with their hands upon their knees between their thighs and their knees? Or it is someone to sit down and rest and then get up upon the hands, etc. Some of the women might say that it's an act of Sunnah and others say it is something that the Prophet Sallallahu only did out of necessity only did out of necessity. We only mention this as a side benefit. So that being the case, we're not going to get into the proofs and the evidences of these ulama, those who say it's absolute sunnah, and those who say it's something that is only done out of need, out of hygiene. As far as how to implement it, then it's simple and it's easy. After the second sajda, you get up and you sit there. There is no specific dhikr that you are to make in that city. You sit for a couple of seconds, a couple of brief pauses, a couple of brief moments, a couple of brief, brief breaths, and then you stand back up. As far as when do you make the takbir? While you're sitting, after you stood up, etc. This is all optional. And that's because this is a branch from the other places of the prayer. When should the Imam make the takbir? Before the movement, after the movement, simultaneous movement with the actual movement when to raise the hands before the takbir with the takbir or after the takbir we say that be the light ta'ala it is all option as far as the pre-assumed problem or issue of those praying behind the imam how they know what will they do they might they will stand up or think he has made a mistake and the people are to follow the imam they are to listen to him and they are to look towards him. And this is one of the reasons why the Prophet ﷺ told the people to come forth to get close to the Imam. He says, Taqaddamu, Fatamu bi. He says, Come close and follow me. He says, And let those who are after you follow you. So from the wisdoms of being close to the Imam is that you can see, you can hear, you can feel, and you can sense if there is a mistake, if the Imam does something, and not only that, but you can learn from the Imam. Because the Imam is supposed to be pre-assumed that he's the most knowledgeable and the most learned of the prayer. So from the fact of being close to the Imam is that not only you can follow him better, but you can learn the actions from the Salah. As far as making the takbir after when it stood up, before you move, as we said, that is optional. Hopefully this is clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely knows best.